I was drawn to it, you know? Don't know what it was, but it felt like a low hum in my fingers, a whistling in my ears. I was cleaning up the church my family and I go to, vacuuming underneath the baptism when I thought I heard a scream. I took my headphones off and turned off the vacuum. That's when I felt the hum. Hello? Nobody should have been in there. I was promised I would be alone. I do my best cleaning alone. I was met with the static of silence. Then came the whistling. Before I knew it, I was descending the stairs leading to the basement. I had only been down there a few times in my seven years of going here. It was used for storage, kind of forgotten actually. Filled. Filled with dusted piles of junk, old hymnals, a sad broken organ hiding in the shadows. When I reached the bottom of the steps, my feet kept moving, walking in the direction of the organ in slow, steady steps. It was dark, the slowly fading sunlight barely reaching in through the small windows. The shadows seemed to grow the closer to the organ I got. Then I was bent down, reaching into a pile of papers and old choir costumes, my hands moving smoothly through the junk. When my skin brushed hot leather, I knew I found it. My ears stopped ringing, and I pulled out what my body had been so desperate to find. It was the journal. I don't think I have much time, I don't know how else to explain, so I'll transcribe the journal here. The author can do a better job of explaining than I can. It's short, but I think you'll all enjoy it. I wish I never would have found it. The dreams only started a week ago. I thought maybe they didn't mean anything. I've had nightmares before, nightmares that stuck, so I wasn't hung up on this one. After the second and third dream though, I knew better. And after last night, I have no doubts. These dreams are memories. I don't have much time left. I need you to know. I need somebody to find this and stop it before it's too late. I'm 56 years old. I live alone. Never married. No children. I have no family. No memories of childhood. I mean, it never really bothered me. The only clue I have to where I come from is a picture of my parents. I keep it in my wallet, though I don't know why. It's of a woman, my mother, with dark red hair and freckles dotting her face, wearing a long black dress and holding a baby, and a man. There was no smile on her face. The man, assumingly my father, was also wearing black robes. He was dark skinned and even darker eyes. He wasn't smiling either. After this past week, I feel relief and guilt that I don't remember anything. Relief because I don't want to know what I've done. Guilt because I wish I had more to tell you, more to arm you with. The first dream started abruptly. I was in a small village on the outside, placed out of the way on the tree line. This place was surrounded by forest. People were moving and walking, going about what I assume were their daily chores. The women wore white, the men wore brown. The children wore three colours, blue, brown and green. After a running child fell close to my feet and picked himself up, I realised that the clothing matched eye colour. Then I realised all the children were identical. Some, freckles, moles or other blemishes, different skin tones, different hair colours, but all had the same face. I reached a hand to my own face and found it smooth, wrinkle free, youthful. Looking at my hands, I found all my fingers ringed with gold and brandings on my wrists. I didn't recognize these marks. I started to inspect my black gown when I realized someone was speaking to me. A dark-skinned man with a mole right next to his right eye. He was speaking a language I'd never heard of, and I was responding to him. After my last remark, his face turned cold and rigid. He nodded and cast his eyes down before walking away. I watched him approach a fair-skinned woman with red hair and a red choker. It looked painted on. She made eye contact and smiled. I didn't break my gaze when she winked. And when her left iris turned from brown to gold, I woke up. I was drenched in sweat. My nails were dirty, 
My heart was pounding. My throat felt scratchy. I looked at my clock and saw my alarm would go off soon. So I got up and went about my day. My stomach felt like it was full of rocks until I got home and showered. The second dream didn't come the next night, but the night after that. It also seemed to be in sequence, picking up at least a day after the first one took place, seeing how the children had on different clothing. The same colours, just different. I was in a different spot, standing inside the village this time. I was in a small dirt clearing, in the middle of all the plain children. Small homes formed a circle around the clearing, visible through the small clouds of dust being kicked up by the children. My hands were clasped in front of me, fingers still decorated in gold, glowing against my black dress. One child in particular kept catching my eye though. He was a small boy, curly black hair adorned his head, and bright blue eyes jeweling his face. He didn't seem special outside those eyes, but I couldn't stop watching him. A woman approached me then, tan skin and pearly white teeth showing through a shy smile. Her glossy black hair rained down from her head and stopped below her waist. She spoke to me. I felt my body go stiff with... anger? I let out a short reply. Her smile fell. Sadness missed over her eyes and she nodded and bowed away from me. I noticed a black band around her right index finger as she walked away. When I looked back to the children, the boy was looking at me. I woke up. I never had dreams continue this way, and I'd be lying if I say this one didn't leave me feeling heavy. The boy's face glued to my brain. I almost feel like I knew him. I tried to shake it off and went back to sleep, fitfully caressing my stomach and humming a tune I didn't know. The third dream came the next night, but once again seemed to pick up a few days later, after the last dream. I was inside the forest now, deep inside. The village wasn't visible, just trees as far as you can see. A canopy of leaves kept the sun away and ushered in a breeze. I was on a sort of stage, speaking to all the people from the village. Next to me were four gallows, thankfully empty. All the children were right in front, knelt before the stage and bowed to me. The adults stood behind them, some nodding, some whispering. There was a woman crying. Why were there no babies? I thought I heard a crow nearby. Once I finished speaking, I knelt down. A small goat was brought to the stage along with a bucket and a rusty knife. Cold seeped into my chest. The children were looking at me now, still knelt before the stage. Nobody looked away. The children began to sing, softly at first, building and getting louder as the goat stopped before me. Its right side was facing me, one glassy eye never leaving mine. I crooned into its soft grey neck, my other hand dragging the dull knife across its throat and letting it drop into the bucket. The children began to cry, heart-wrenching sobs for the animal that fell silently to my knees. I never leaving mine as it took its last breath. I saw the boy with blue eyes, and all sounds stopped as I brought the bucket to my mouth. I was awake and vomiting on my floor. With every dream, it gets harder to tell what's a dream and what is real. I looked down at my floor and saw a black puddle, the moon reflecting through my window. I turned on my lamp and saw clumps of grey hair slowly sinking into the crimson pool. I don't remember anything after that. I called my boss the next morning and after some time off, giving some excuse or another. After a few minutes of friendly bounce, he agreed to let me off the phone. I felt so tired, so sore. My stomach ached constantly, and I kept seeing people from my dreams in my waking life. When I looked in the mirror that morning, I saw the boy looking back at me. I felt like I was losing my mind. That night I laid down in my bed, rubbing my angry stomach, and sank slowly into the abyss. It's like watching a silent movie. I was leading the movie crowd, hands always clasped in front of me, the markings on my wrist glowing and burning. Directly behind me was the blue-eyed boy being escorted by the woman in the red choker, a playful smile on her face reaching her brown eyes. There was no sound. The boy's mouth was sewn shut and his eyes seemed far away. In his hands was the upside-down goat's head. I could still feel its eyes boring into mine. I felt a cold breeze and turned to look in front of me. We were coming out of the forest to a small shore and a lake. 
the entire lake was surrounded by trees and it looked absolutely beautiful. About 200 feet out from the shore was a woman. She was so still, so beautiful, that I thought she may have been carved from obsidian. I felt my breath leave when I saw her, when I saw every detail of her face, even from so far away. Her dark skin glistened despite the sun being shrouded in clouds. Small runes marked her face and only added to its exquisiteness. There was no smile on her lips, but when her golden eyes burned into mine, I could almost hear laughter. She must have been very tall, as the water didn't even reach past her knees. Dark locks of hair fell over her shoulders, past her hips and into the water, with random touches of gold throughout. A white gown coated her like milk and blue in the light breeze. Her feline eyes were glowing even brighter now. Some of the people fell to their knees in reverence. There was no sound. I turned and looked at the boy. A small tear fell from his left eye as I moved to the side and allowed him to pass. He walked to the edge of the water and set the goat's head upside down and drew half a circle around it. Some of the blood spilled out of it and he walked into the water. My ears began to ring. The closer he got to the unmoving woman, the louder the ringing. By the time he reached her, the water was up to his neck, and the ringing was so loud I thought my head would explode. The woman reached out, her hand to caress his face, then smiled. The smile grew, exposing sharp teeth, and then her mouth opened, unhinging her jaw and opening her mouth wider still. I screamed, and everything went black. I woke up soaked, with pruned fingers and sheets. I'd wet myself and the scream was still hot on my lips. I got up to get some water and shower, get some new sheets, and felt my hair was dripping wet. It smelled clean, but I don't remember showering. Walking to my kitchen, I stopped short when I saw my house shoes at the front door, soaking wet and covered in sand. I looked back towards the kitchen and fell to my knees as screams filled my head. Screams from a mother watching her child be devoured. Screams from the spectators. Screams from something not human. Flashes of trees swam into my vision, and I felt twigs snapping my arms, my bloody feet running, and desperate. I heard my own scream. I came to clutching my own head and sobbing in my kitchen floor. And just like that, it was over. I felt a breeze, and when I turned to face my back door, I saw a faint silhouette of a person standing there. I blinked, and she was gone. I felt a burning on my wrist and looked to see them bloody and raw like I'd been scratching them. My stomach hurt so bad, it felt like something was trying to claw its way out. I tried to throw up, but I could only dry heave. I crawled onto my stomach and tried to will myself back to sleep. Silently crying, I placed a hand on my stomach and felt the pain subside slowly. As I drifted to sleep, I remember praying not to dream and that it would all end soon. I didn't dream, but I wish I had. I was awake, in my bedroom, sitting on the floor, staring into a large mirror I have in the corner. It was dark, still night. My cross legs burnt viciously from cramps and my neck was burning. I was singing too, a soft song with words I didn't understand and a melody I didn't know. I could see my white nightgown turning red between my legs in the mirror. My eyes started to glow a dull orange. My mouth would not stop moving, my eyes couldn't leave the mirror. I could see her behind me. Fire lit up her face as she swayed, smiling softly at my reflection like a loving mother. The light from the window behind her made her look softer somehow. Her hair moved in a breeze I couldn't feel and her dress ended in a small puddle of moving water. Her smile widened, then showing sharp ivory. When her eyes turned black and her lips parted in a whistle I blacked out. When I came to I was in my bed, my dress clean and my feet damp and pruned. That was two nights ago. I think I'm out of time and she'll take me soon. Just as she's taken the blue-eyed baby from my belly. We've opened Pandora's box. We made her hungrier. This will be the end of my story, so don't go looking for me. There won't be anything to find. If you see her, it's too late. And you'll know it's her. You'll buckle at her beauty. And then she'll be gone. And soon, you will be too. I'm so sorry. I don't know what we've done. I don't know why. I don't know how else to warn you. I'm sorry. This is how the journal ends. Fascinating, yeah? I thought so too at first. 
As I said before, I wish I'd never found it. I took it home with me that day, and as soon as I started reading it, I found I couldn't put it down. Even when I finished with it, I kept it close. I fell asleep that night with the journal in my hand, and I slept hard. I don't usually remember my dreams, but I vaguely remembered the one I had last night. Flashes of water, of gold, of a little boy with bright blue eyes. I know it was meant to be a warning, but I think the journal is a beacon. I think it helps her find you. And when she's found you, it's too late. It's been two days and I can't stop seeing her when I close my eyes. I haven't slept. My fingers burn and my jaw is locked. Don't come looking for me. Don't come looking for the journal. I plan to burn it with me tonight, because after what happened today, I know she's coming. She's found me. You see, I woke up this morning at 4 a.m., but I wasn't in my bed. I was standing at the edge of a pond behind my house, staring out into the water. I didn't have my glasses on, but I could see a shape of a person standing in the water. A woman. I wanted to warn you. She's here.